From the station that's on your side, News 12, first at 5, continues. 90 days after a Millen man's disappearance, his widow sits down with News 12 on how she is moving forward despite her grief. And one woman is looking for answers after she says her dog was taken and later found dead in broad daylight. But first at five, we have new information about the damage on two City of Augusta fire trucks after both overturned when responding to emergency calls. And more clarity on the stopgap contract for Gold Cross. Our Craig Allison is live at five from the municipal building. And Craig, what were you able to find out today? Well, first off, before we get to the fire trucks, the biggest takeaway is that commissioners were able to finalize this contract. So, yes, you will be able to call 911 tomorrow on February 1st, and there will be an EMS response that will come to you and help you out if you need it. Now, the troubles for Augusta Fire are just starting as it's looking like a hefty price tag. Well, Augusta Fire still has no definitive answer for the two overturned fire trucks, both within a week of each other, and they say it's still being investigated for human error and for equipment error. Money-wise, the city is self-insured, meaning they absorb the cost of total vehicles in their own budget. So if one or both of these vehicles are totaled, that is a serious dent in the budget. Chief Burton also says he still doesn't have any idea how much these accidents are going to cost, but is aware it's coming out of his department's budget. To give you an idea, the fire department just purchased a new rig, which is about $1.6 million, and the costs have gone up since then. I spoke with Public Safety Chair Catherine Smith-McKnight about how she's feeling about this whole situation. I have not, in all my lifetime, 50 years in Augusta, have not heard of two uh, fire truck rigs flipping over within a week's time. I want to know we've got to hold people accountable. We also got to find out where the funds are coming from to either replace them or fix them. And all new on News 12 at 6 o'clock, we're going to hear from the mayor, who also just found out the city is self-insured, and what he thinks about this whole situation as well. All right, thanks for that update there, Craig. Switching gears to weather now, we're taking a live Thursday and Friday in just a bit. Thanks for that, Riley. A husband, father, and friend vanishes into thin air and later found dead. Two months ago, Ricky Esco Green went missing in Jenkins County. Investigators are looking for answers after his remains were found in the woods. Now his family is trying to come to grips on how his death may have happened. Tonight, live at 5, our Hallie Turner sits down with his wife, who doesn't want to show her face, but wants to honor his life in the days ahead. Anna Hoflich describes her husband Esco as the life of the party. Yeah, jokester. He's kind hearted. He had a huge heart too. So like even if you would have done him wrong, he would have given you a million freaking tries. You know, a million chances. Ninety days after his disappearance on November second, she's left trying to figure out how a walk to clear his head ended with her planning his memorial. No, I didn't think it would turn to this. No, he loved his babies. He wouldn't have been like disappeared from his babies. So that's the part that's unbelievable right now. Their three children left asking, Well, where's daddy? Um, we miss daddy and then it was constantly looking out the window trying to see daddy when my daughter was like you know he might not be here with us right now but he's always in our heart that was heartbreaking to keep him alive they remember the good times always wanting to like um uh, be with the kids in the aspect of like trying to teach them stuff um anything that he had gone through in life just trying to teach them to do better don't do the same kind of mistakes or you know go through hardships in life try to set them up for a better path and his motto my head up keep going don't give up because that's the last thing he would want me to do but that's so hard right now it's like that's what i want to do but i can't do that reporting in mill and hallie turner on your side all right thanks for that hallie if you live or drive in aiken listen up and slow down on the roads a special traffic enforcement period ends tonight Highway Patrol and local law enforcement are looking for aggressive, drunk, or distracted drivers. The hopes are to reduce deadly crashes and deaths in the state. In 2022 alone, the state saw over 1,100 traffic deaths. In our area, 31 were in Aiken, 8 in Edgefield, and 2 in Barnwell. Two years later, and design plans are still changing for the new North Augusta Public Safety Headquarters. The new design shows more brick will be used and the clock tower will be gone. 
is about a mile away from the current location on East Buena Vista Avenue and will move where the old Seven Gables Motel used to be. An Augusta dog mom is offering a big reward for anyone with answers about the death of her dog. As our Taylor Martin reports, someone stole the dog while she was out putting away Christmas lights. And after days of searching, what she found was not pretty. The relationship I had with her, I've never had with a human. Ever. You know, it was love without a gender. It was a little more than a month ago, on December 28th, when Tracy Jenkins was putting away her Christmas lights and realized her dog Lila Grace had gone missing. When she didn't come, immediately I started looking for her. I walked the neighborhood, I screamed for her, I hollered. She says on January 15th, her other dog and Lila's best friend, Handsome, led her to Lila at this abandoned home on Thomas Lane, just feet away from her house. She tells me what she found has been replaying in her mind since the day it happened. And he ran straight up to her and just started nudging her. You know, like, tell her to get up. And, uh, of course she wasn't getting up. Yeah, uh, I lost it. She found Lila on the ground with a rope tied around her neck. Tracy says she used a wagon to carry her home and bury her. She says she called Richmond County Sheriff's Office and Animal Control multiple times. They told her they can't do anything unless she knows who did it. After the Sheriff's Office agreed to take her report over the phone, she's taking matters into her own hands to find who did this, offering a $4,000 reward to anyone who has a tip that leads to an arrest. Even if I can't find out who did this to Lila, if it stops one pet, just one, from having to go through what she went through, I will have failed some justice. Reporting in Augusta, Taylor Martin, on your side. And a sad story there for a lot of us who are dog lovers. Yeah. And of course, her concern and everyone she tells the story to is if someone can do this to an animal, what can they do to a person? I know that she shared this on Facebook. It's been shared a lot of times. Hopefully, somebody knows something and, some and justice can happen yeah, from this. We'll come forward. Well, taking a live look outside at I well, taking a live look outside at I-20 at the state line, starting at 8 tonight, the right lane headed into Georgia will be closed. That's I-20 westbound from exit 1 to the Augusta Canal Bridge. It will reopen by 6 a.m. tomorrow. The same closure will happen again Thursday night, so beware of traffic impacts if you're in the area or on your way to work. Well, parents, listen up. If you want your teen or to work for Augusta National Golf Club during Masters Week, there is a job fair happening right now. There are openings for tournament, cleaning services, overnight sandwich prep, and other job services as well. There is still time to get out to the Legends Club. This event ends at 7, and we do have this link to our webpage, wrdw.com. If you missed out, they are still taking applications online. Well, breaking barriers. Next at 5, lawmakers are working to speed up the process when it comes to getting a roof over the heads of people who need it most. Riley? Mostly dry heading into tomorrow, but we are tracking a ne our next heavy rain threat Thursday into Friday later this week. Update on the full forecast just after the break. Time and temp. Look at this, our high temp Saturday afternoon, only in the mid to upper 40s. We'll see those mornings back down below freezing through the weekend, and then chance for an isolated shower is possible again by Sunday. All right, thank you, Riley. Prices are going up on almost everything, pushing some to look for affordable housing, but... Georgia does not exactly have a lot of options. Yeah, now state lawmakers are working to remove barriers to make the building process more affordable. Hopefully that will speed the process up and give people in need a roof over their head. State House reporter Abby Casores has more on the new proposed standards. The population in Georgia is growing rapidly, and with businesses moving to the area, state lawmakers are concerned where are workers supposed to live. They've been holding special committee meetings, meeting with builders, real estate agents, and local governments to reverse the trend of rising prices and low supply. The median price for a new home in Georgia is over $300,000. That price has risen 40% in the last four years. Brad Mock with Georgia Realtors says the increase is shutting people out of buying a home. People that are getting squeezed right now are looking for their first house or maybe their last house. Some of our elderly want to be able to downsize.
downsize, and they're not going to have that opportunity. The Georgia Homeowners Association estimates that for each $1,000 added to the cost of a home, the amount exceeds the affordability of nearly 5,000 Georgia families. An additional $15,000 excludes 72,000 families. That equity in that home that will grow is a centerpiece of the path to wealth. Republican Gail Washburn is working on a bill to change the statewide Georgia building code to change the size, materials, and siding requirements. Nobody is trying to reduce that. Nobody is trying to reduce the quality of housing. This is about architectural design standards. Mock says, for example, vinyl versus brick siding could save a homeowner thousands of dollars on their home price. From a realtor perspective, for our association, it's all about increasing supply. Can we find ways that are safe? to increase supply. Right now, building requirements are up to local leaders in the planning and zoning board. Jim Thornton with the Georgia Municipal Association says creating a statewide rule takes away power at the local level. They want to maintain the look and feel of their community. They also want affordable housing. Sometimes these are compatible interests. Sometimes they come into conflict. But those decision makers need to be on the local level. The Georgia Homeowners Association estimates they'll need 60 to 65,000 permits approved this year to keep up with population growth. And right now, they're about 10,000 short. Washburn says he plans to present that bill later this week, and then it will be assigned to a committee. At the Capitol, I'm Abby Kasouris. You're watching News 12 on your side. With the Kroger Plus card, it's today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. The paddle boarder says she has a smartphone app to thank for finding out where she was and led to her being pulled from the water. It's an app anyone can put on their smartphone to help in an emergency. Our consumer tech reporter, Jamie Tucker, explains how a simple app helped locate a lost paddle boarder with just three words. Rebecca Senderlin was on a paddle board somewhere off the coast of Virginia Beach, Virginia, when in a matter of minutes, the weather changed. The tides changed. And the wind changed too. So all of a sudden I found myself paddling against the tide and against the wind. And it was just like, it was like being on a, a paddleboard treadmill. Like I wasn't going anywhere. Drifting toward Chesapeake Bay for who knows how long, she was near exhaustion and understood the danger she found herself in. That's when I got really scared because I thought, you know, like I'm, I'm a pretty good paddleboarder, but you know, if I get, if I go unconscious, then I'm, I'm dead. Like I'm going to drown here. She says she eventually reached a boat dock and then called her husband on her smartphone. I said, okay, I'm, I'm at this boat dock. Um, I, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> I have no idea where I am. And he said, well, you know, do you still have that What Three Words app? The developers of the app What Three Words mapped the globe in three by three meter squares and identified each square with three unique word combinations. Sanderlin told her husband she was at Labs Piano Food. It's so precise, if she had been on the other side of the dock, she would have been at Arena Leaves Nurse. Using the three words, her husband followed turn-by-turn -turn directions to her location, helped her onto dry land, and took her home, where she quickly added the app to her kids' smartphones. So that, you know, if they get lost somewhere and don't know how to communicate their location, they can tell me that way. This app has been credited with saving multiple hikers lost in the forest. Best of all, the app needs very little battery power to work, so you can use it even if your smartphone's about to die. That's What the Tech. I'm Jamie Tucker. On your sideline, sports brought to you by the Hawk Law Group. Good evening, everyone. After coming into the new year with only one loss, the last couple of weeks have been tough sledding for the, for the Augusta University men's basketball team. The Jaguars suffered back-to-back -back losses in a four-day span, and in those games, their opponents had success making one of AU's strengths a weakness. At one point, the game of basketball was dominated by big men, and something that the Jaguars are have different than all the other teams in the Peach Belt is their 7'1 senior center, Tyshawn Crawford. While Crawford has the ability to dominate the paint and score easy buckets, other teams have been attacking him on the defensive end by playing small ball. He's an endangered species is the best way to describe him. He's not a dinosaur. He's an endangered species. You know, he provides so much around the basket for us. Now, on the flip side, he's got to go out on the floor and guard. And it's not his you know, strength. But just like a great offensive player as a guard, it's five guys guarding the ball. 
That team mentality on the defensive side of the ball will be important over the next four weeks because the Jaguars have eight games left on their schedule before the Peach Vale Conference Tournament, five of which will be played inside Christenberry Fieldhouse. That's it for sports. Stick around. We'll have more news after the break. The Zach's musician sensation. Shocking video from Hawaii oh, wow. shows a huge boulder. Yeah, that was a boulder that crashed into a living room. I know it looked like a car, didn't it? Yeah. It was just inches from the homeowner. She and her husband had just moved into their home when this happened. I mean, look at that. That's a crazy. massive boulder smashed through their fence, grazed their car, and then boom, plowed right through their home. City engineers were on scene very soon after that, inspecting the hilly area, which is known for similar huge boulders. The family now waits for answers on a shocking surprise that was way too close for comfort. I mean, they were real. Look how close she was to being in the I back know. of the boulder there. I mean, that's just perfect timing. That's crazy. It's, it's a huge. literal, it's a literal wrecking ball. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Would not want to be in the way of that. No. Yeah, she was very lucky there. That is some pretty scary video. Hey, we got some nice weather in store for tomorrow. Mostly dry Wednesday, but we do have some heavy rain moving back in the forecast Thursday and Friday. Finally drying out this weekend. All right, thanks, Riley. That's all the time.